This is an animation studio in London's Soho Square. For months, the atmosphere here has been one of inspired insanity, an environment necessary to the fulfillment of one of the most unusual motion picture challenges of all time, the visualization in animation of the enormously popular Beatles for their next feature film. Most motion pictures begin with a story. Yellow Submarine was inspired by a song, a mod odyssey of a man who sailed away to live beneath the sea. From Homer to Tolkien, authors have been fascinated with the literary possibilities of impossible voyages and journeys to lands of fantasy. The most lasting work of Dante, Swift, Wells, and a handful of others have been based on odyssey situations. In selecting Yellow Submarine for the Beatles' first full-length animated film, King Features, producers of the movie, were standing on firm literary ground. Adding greatly to the popularity of the Odysseys conceived by Lewis Carroll, L. Frank Baum, Jules Verne, and some of the others, had been the marvelous illustrations which have become nearly inseparable from the text, perfectly reflecting the authors and their times. In animation, of course, the illustrations are even more important than the words. In bringing the Beatles' mod, op art world to the screen, the producers used every means at their command and invented many new animation techniques. The British magazine Punch observed that the Lennon-McCartney songs used in the film seemed to have been conceived and brought forth in the pure, simple spirit of mystical innocence, like the paintings of Chagall. And like Chagall's works, the film tries to include everything in the world to make up its own cosmos. The animation style ranges from storybook simplicity to pop art and psychedelic shimmer. The film, of course, is not all eye-popping visual effects. As in other odysseys, there is an assortment of odd and outrageous creatures. Most of them, if not all, inventions of satire. Says supervising director George Dunning, Satire has become part of our daily diet. We can include things in a cartoon today that wouldn't have even been put in a live comedy years ago. There are the blue meanies, a screeching spoof of baddies everywhere. At heaven is blue. Come out of the world! Ring in my blue. He's a real nowhere man, sitting in his nowhere land. And there is the boob, a put-on of pseudo-intellectuals. I must complete my box. Two novels, finish my blueprints, begin my begin. There's the Lord Mayor, a caricature of the older generation. The blue meanies are coming. They wouldn't dare. They would. They are. What are you going to do? Finish the quartet. And a gaggle of grotesqueries that will keep audiences guessing their inspiration for years to come. <laughs> One group of characters is immediately recognizable. The Beatles themselves. Your faces. They're quite cute, really. You could pass for the originals. Well, we are the original. In A Hard Day's Night and Help, the Beatles proved that pop music movies can be made for adults. Now they're out to do the same for cartoons. But attempting to capture the Beatles in animation is risky business. For the first time in screen history, extremely real and enormously famous people were going to be animated into a feature film. In charge of the project is the German designer Heinz Edelmann. The story calls for human beings, so they must be drawn without stiffness, yet look real. Months of studying the Beatles' movements and making detailed production notes were required before the Beatles began to take shape on the drawing boards. Even a walk formula was necessary to maintain their character. George, John, and Paul move at 32 frames per second, while Ringo, <laughs> the shortest, plods along at 24. George walks like a cowboy, Paul like a confident young executive, John like a showman, 
and Ringo like a schoolboy Charlie Chaplin. George's leg is shaped differently from Paul's, and his trouser leg, legs uh, flop. When Ringo's eyeballs move around in eyes, the dots remain in center of circles. Each of the Beatles is characterized by a well-known part of his personality, naturally. Paul is introduced as a mod Mozart, playing serious music in a museum. George appears out of a haze of transcendental meditation, the mystic philosophy he popularized. John, author of In His Own Right, emerges from a classic literary creation. And Ringo is pictured as his inimitable self, wandering winsomely by the shore in Liverpool as he did in a hard day's night. From a script described as a sort of open-end Rorschach filled with Joyce and puns. You were bluish. You don't look bluish. In a new style of animation, described by its director and designer as... Miles from the average concept of cartoon characters with large heads and little legs. It is a Picasso wish, of course, in the use of space as a well as line to achieve movement. And with the mind-bending sounds of the Beatles, Yellow Submarine breaks new ground in the art of animation. Just as Swift and Carroll changed the history of literature, as Chagall and Picasso brought new life to art, the Beatles are revitalizing the art of animation. It's a truly mod world where medium and message meld. The new art of the psychedelic 60s.